What's up, World Pro Ski Tour? It's a great honor and an incredible privilege to be sitting next to this man, this Norwegian legend, this skiing pioneer, Otto Schutte. Thanks for coming on the show, Otto. Great, love to be here. You have, you have five NCAA championships to your name. You went to multiple Olympics. You were named to the Norwegian ski team when you were just 14 years old. Out of all of those, what was the most memorable race? Well, that's a difficult one. <laughs> uh, I guess uh, the one that really pivoted my life into uh, what it is today, which um, it tells you one thing. If I was going to say one thing that I learned through all this process was you never know when you meet somebody what's going to happen and it might change your life and my life was changed in 69 when i came out of third seed and uh, i was in the top 10 in kidsville song kidsville song for those of you who don't know it's like 80,000 people in complete chaos anyway so this guy comes walking up to me in the finish here and it said in german you know i wouldn't see after school have you thought about school so next weekend i'm on that podium uh, and it took him about 20 minutes to turn out that there was a guy called Willie Scheffler, who is an icon in U.S. game for the people who have little gray hair. Uh, he put on the Olympics in Squaw Valley. Uh, he started handicap skiing. I mean, the guy. And he was also a coach at the University of Denver and also later for the U.S. ski team. Anyway, so he talked me into it. I shook his hand. I had no idea. I'd never been to the U.S. I had no idea when I was shaking his hand. Yeah. I told my mom. I said, I'm going to the U.S. She said, oh, God. I'll never see him again. I worked over on a Volkswagen boat, uh, took the Greyhound bus from uh, New York, New Jersey to Denver, and the uh, rest is history. So you never know who you're going to meet when, always be open. That's the lesson. It's interesting. It's, it wasn't the ski racing or the race that was the most memorable. It, you were at the race, but who you met there is what changed your life. What a, that's such yeah, a cool I mean, perspective. I the course. I could, I could draw the course for you. Uh, so the race was very memorable, but what happened? after it was really the big pivot. Another question I wanted to ask you, you've worked with many brands, you're an entrepreneur yourself, you worked with Rosinal Skis, you helped design what is now Full Tilt Ski Boots, you made uh, Auto Racing the first padded ski suit. So of all of those designs, everything you helped to develop, which product do you think helped athletes today perform better? Okay, that's a good question. So time has changed, right? Because yeah. when the breakaway poles happen, uh, but protective gear is still very important. We didn't have any protective gear, there was one lady in Swiss in uh, Italy called Silvi who made a padded sweater because the problem was at that point, you know, these races, some of them had like, you know, little little trees that hadn't really been cut off the, the, the branches. So they hooked up in your sweater or whatever you had on and ripped the clothes. Up. And you hit them, right? You go straight at them, but they didn't give bloody all over i mean i can show you my hands my lats my everything is just completely very thin skin because it was bleeding so much so finally i said this is ridiculous so uh with my then girlfriend we went to italy found a bunch of materials lycra paddings close and uh foam that mm -hmm. you can hit with a bar without feeling anything and we made this suit called the auto race suit. Everybody wanted it. All, all the things I worked on, that's what really made the biggest difference. Now, uh, they still wear padding, but now it's more protective gear, as you guys know it, uh, you know, hard plastic, et cetera. But right. there's still some padding, right? So that was the biggest thing. Uh, I enjoyed doing a lot of the other stuff, you know, because it helped performance. And I think that the full tilt or then flex on boot that was made by Reichle, one of my sponsors, we designed it, my buddy and I designed it, a guy called Roger Neely, uh, which had really good function. I think it's won an Olympic medal. I, I didn't check the last Olympics, but every Olympic since like 1984. Very functional design. And funny enough, people are still in Monte Belluna, which is the capital of making ski boots in Italy. They make the boot the same way as they've done for you know, the last 50 years. It's so stupid. It's not a functional design the way it's made and the flex on is. You mentioned something like, yes, the gear has progressed and there's different plastics to protect the racers, but also I think we've evolved beyond race case made out of trees. <laughs> yeah. Well, you'd be, you'd be surprised. I mean, this was not the World Cup. The right. World Cup started in 67. So it started, you know, after I started racing on the, they call it Fist A at that time. Okay. But uh, there were races on uh, like the Europe Cup, you know, came into like Kranska Gora or someplace like that in Yugoslavia. Uh, they hadn't read the rule book. I mean, uh, they had some nice saplings out in the woods, you know, they just forgot to take, take the branches all the way off. 
lot of rice suits. I want to also ask you about your time on the World Pro Ski Tour. You went to two Olympics and then you decided to spend the majority of the 70s racing on the World Pro Ski Tour when Bobby Addy was, was leading the charge. How was that? What was some of the most memorable um, times you had on the tour? Well, what made me change was all the BS that was going on on the World Cup. Uh, there was a guy called Ivory Brundage. Uh, who was an American, actually, a uh, billionaire. He made some rules and said that we couldn't be paid. And Alpine skiers had been paid, uh, you know, in Swiss bank accounts for years. I mean, it was very professional sport, but not yeah. officially. So after the Summer Olympics, I went to uh, Vail and I looked at one of these races, the Land Cup, and Tyler and Terry Palmer was in it, my buddies, many of my buddies. And I said, this is it. This is entrepreneurship. And, um, you know, I met Bob, who I actually knew before, but I met him there and uh, I signed up right away. He is fabulous, right? He, for, for those of you who don't know what he did for skiing, he got skiing on television. Uh, he was the guy who invented the World Cup together with two other guys, George Lang and Henri Bonnet. 66 over a cocktail in the uh, Yeah, so the, the, the tour was for us as entrepreneurs. Bob let us do whatever we wanted in business, but obviously keep track of sponsors. Yeah. And he, he taught us how to be entrepreneurs, which, and prepared us for life. You know, through skiing, I met the people I'm still working for for the last 40 years. Tom Weisel, you know, ran the U.S. ski team and turned the U.S. ski team around. And, um, and we started a foundation called Bobby Eddie Ski Foundation, which is working on trying to make skiing better, trying to spread dual racing. Right. So we tried to work with Franklin and, uh, you know, to try to help better the sport. And we're so grateful for all that support and everything that, that Bob did and, and helped all of you in the early, early days back in the, uh, the 70s and 80s. And it's, it's amazing that, that you're still supporting us today. And we want to thank you for that. It means a lot. Love it. It's all in the spirit of Bob. Bob is the guy who puts put us into the situation we're in now, many of us. Uh, he was an entrepreneur and a, and a really free thinker. And, uh, you know, he figured this out. I mean, let's face it. Dual racing is the most exciting thing in skiing besides downhill. It is. And that means a lot, especially from someone with such an extensive race background like yourself. Yeah, and people are inventing all these things, you know, like the combined and and the World Cup. I mean, who cares about come on. It's going away, by the way. Uh, you know, they finally figured out the other day, I saw that uh, they're going to do uh, two races. So not just one race for elimination. Yep. Which we could have told them uh, when they started. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> doesn't work. The snow is not the same. No. The hill is not the same. You've no. got to you have gotta switch. one race on each. Well, Otto, thank you so much for this conversation. It, it was an honor. I'm excited to have you back on in a couple of weeks on 321 Trivia. What are you going to throw at me then? Who uh, won the last World Pro Skiing Race? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. No hints. No, I think, uh, you know, uh, enjoy the sport. I feel very important is that skiers also get an education. So I'm very involved with NCAA skiing. And um, I think that the NCAA skiing circuit and World Pro skiing and all the stuff that's going on in racing could work better together. So I hope that that's going to happen. And we have some ideas about that we're working on. Very cool. Otto, thank you so much. Take care. Take care.